I was once dragged into the headmaster's office after I was caught leaning out of a window and firing a cream egg into my friend's mouth with a catapult. <laughs> was this when you were a teacher or a pupil? <laughs> I'm ashamed to say it was when I was a teacher. <laughs> um, so, can you describe the, the setup? Um, I, I was teaching in a drama studio on the ground floor, mm -hmm. and I could see my friend who was teaching economics on the <laughs> second floor at the end of the building. So, it's across, is there like a courtyard in between? Yeah, playground. Playground. And. He went to different schools, yeah. didn't you? <laughs> Was it, did the moat not get in the way, or was it...? <laughs> <laughs> right, goody, goody, the bell's gone, let's go to the courtyard! <laughs> OK, let's... <laughs> you're, you're firing over the croquet lawn. Yeah. <laughs> I, I confiscated a catapult that morning from a child. OK. I was in my drama studio, there's an office, I closed the door and let the children uh, do whatever they used to do in my sure. lessons. <laughs> and I, I hung out of the window, I saw my friend, Gavin, yeah. and I went... <whistles> it was the height of summer. Right. So Gavin is in the middle of an economics lesson, <whistles> and he goes, oh, there's my friend. Gosh, he's holding an unwrapped cream egg. And he goes... <laughs> it, wasn't, it, it, it wasn't quite that instinctive. I. I sh I waved the uh, catapult at him, and he was baffled at first. And then I could, I, I could see him distracting his children by setting them some mundane task. Then I revealed the unpeeled egg. Which, by now, by the way, hashtag height of summer, melting. They melt very fast. Here's the thing, Claudia. I genuinely had a mini fridge in my office because... <laughs> I did, because I regularly abuse the uh, drama budget. I'm sorry, but I was very bored. <laughs> I, bought, I, bought a mi <laughs> I bought a mini fridge. <laughs> and just to add colour, I'll tell you this, I bought a top-of-the-range DVD player and I swapped it for one that my grandmother had given me. <laughs> so it's a really nice one home. <laughs> separate, separate story. <laughs> Can we just say, can we say that we believe that story? <laughs> That's true. Cool. I've got a technical question about the window. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Because in schools, windows only open to a very small certain point, yeah. so the kids can't jump Especially out. Especially on the second floor. Wow, how rough was the old school that you bad. taught? Really bad. You couldn't on the window in case they jumped out. Yeah, yeah, just in case they jumped out and drowned in the moat. So, basically... <laughs> That window will only open to a certain yes, point. Yeah. Right. The window did only open half, so Gav had to get on his knees and position his head. <laughs> his, his head virtually filled the amount of window that was open. It was a slide-up uh, window. Where was the headmaster at this point? Walking through playground slash courtyard. He was. He was in his office, I imagine, pretending to do work. Oh. <laughs> And here is the thing yeah. that will convince you one way or the other straight away. <laughs> I mean, it was, I would say it was 25 foot and Gavin did catch it in his mouth. What are they clapping? You lot are going to feel so stupid if that's a lie. <laughs> what do you think, David's team? Does it ring true for you? I do believe the lie is being packaged with real stuff. So, confiscation the, of the... The mini fridge is true. Yeah. True. The confiscation, of, yeah. Everything around the lie is true, but the lie is still a lie. OK, yeah, let's yeah. go, let's go. We'll go lie. Yeah. You're saying it's a lie. Greg, was it the truth or was it a lie? There were elements of truth, but yes. <laughs> Damn you. It's <laughs> a lie. <laughs> I once caused an injury to one man whilst trying to get a different man to say the word vegetables. <laughs> Please, team. Right, just the word vegetables. Yeah. Do you what? really like the word vegetables? Um, no, not as a general rule, no, okay. but I liked it when this man said it. Why? <laughs> what was it about this man, the way he said vegetables, that was funny? Did he have a speech impediment? Or... No, no, he didn't. He was a very intense man, though, and he was also Austrian. I was with a friend once, and he's a, he was a colleague of ours, sorry, and I overheard him say vegetables, and we both found it incredibly funny. Um, so, can you just roughly give us a, an impression of how he used to say vegetables? Is it even just he, said, he said it exactly like this. Yeah. Oh, vegetables! 
And then we happened to be on a coach trip with him, and so we spent the whole coach trip <laughs> trying to get him to save vegetables right, so again. Right, so where were you? Where were you going and how did uh, you know I was him? on a school trip. I used to be a teacher, so we and were... And he, a... he was a teacher? Yeah, he was a teacher. What did he, he teach? He was the head of languages, and he was... Head of languages? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the head of languages just to go... the vegetables! <laughs> Vegetables. <laughs> imagine, imagine I'm the man. OK, I'm on the coach, I'm, I'm sat, we're, we're driving. Off you go. Um, so I said, so, um... Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> You're very big, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> this isn't like him at all. <laughs> You're very big, aren't you? <laughs> So I was saying things like, oh, I've, I've been trying to um, keep fit lately. I've, and I know that you're into keep fit. It, you know, it, w would you re recommend for a healthy diet? And he was going, well, you know, I would, uh, you must eat a balanced diet, you must eat greens, and uh, you, you must enjoy some protein in, in limited... I was going, yeah, yeah, but, I mean, <laughs> if you were to group some of those foods together... <laughs> And he was going, well, I mean, yeah, you must have carbohydrates, of course, oh, and you must have... Yeah. And it was, it was horrific. It went on for about an hour. <laughs> uh, and every time I tried to find a new angle for vegetables, his ludicrous Austrian interpretation of things led us down a dark alley. And it, it was literally an hour in the making. And how did you finally get him to say it? Um, I, I honestly can't remember. It came out of nowhere and he suddenly said it, and he said it with such passion. It was... He, he went, Oh, well, of course you must have vegetables! <laughs> I, I started biting my hand to stop myself from laughing. <laughs> and my... <laughs> and my friend who was next to me, there was, a, there was a jagged piece of metal at the front of the coach, and because it was so funny, just to remind you, you were vegetables, of course! <laughs> And my friend saw the piece of metal and pushed his knee into it on purpose <laughs> to stop himself from laughing. <laughs> and blood started like spraying out of his <laughs> started spraying out of his knee. Yeah. And that is this is getting love at this story. And I'll tell you another detail. We went and did the trip, which was in Paris, and then after we came all the way back <laughs> all the way back to, to um, Calais, and I said to him, um, you know, we put all the kids' passports in that hotel in Paris last night. Did you, um, did you remember to... Cos he was in charge of the trip. Did you remember to bring those? And he, he, he was standing up in front of the children on the coach and he went, Oh, Shazer! <laughs> and he... to speak to the poor authorities <laughs> and get permission to take the kids on without passports while he went back on his own. <laughs> Can I tell you one more detail as well? We were also standing in the middle of Paris under the Eiffel Tower. We'd been there for an hour and the kids were all running around. And he came over and went, we must, we must go, we are late for our next appointment. <laughs> and I said, well, we should just make sure that all the kids are here. And he goes, yes, of course we should, yes. And he turned around <laughs> and went, is everybody here? <laughs> Kids went, yeah, yeah, he went, well, well then we will move on. <laughs> <laughs> the <new> vegetables! <laughs> what are you thinking, Lee? Oh. I think it's true. True from John. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. I think a lie. You are a fantastic actor, Mr. Greg Davis. Well, so, so what are you going to say? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, what do we think, Alex? I think you'll find I'm BAFTA okay. nominated. <laughs> <laughs> We're all BAFTA nominated. <laughs> <laughs> False. Uh, okay, we'll go with lie. You're going to say it's a lie, Greg. No. Truth well, or lie? It is the truth. Oh! <laughs> that yes, that was all true. At school, I invented a game called Snorkel Parker Music Practice Room. <laughs> there we are. Uh, please, team, what do you think? What was the game called again? Um, <laughs> it was called Snorkel Parker Music Practice Room. Right, and can you describe the game to us? 
Myself and um, several friends, uh, we all had snorkel parkers. Well, what is a snorkel yeah. parker for some, for some of the younger viewers? <laughs> it's, um, it, it's a large uh, hooded coat with a fur-lined Oh, collar. the one that comes out at the front yeah. and it's fur... Okay. And you can, you can zip it up so that it comes right up and uh, so that only your eyes are visible. Can you describe the rules? Imagine we've never met, I've got my snorkel parker. <laughs> what would happen next? Well, then you and I, Lee, will go to the music practice room when... I'm not um, falling for this again. <laughs> and you zip up your snorkel parker, yeah. and then you, you... When someone's practising their violin with a violin teacher in the music practice room, yeah. you duck down b below the window, and then you just come up with your snorkel parker on. <laughs> So just imagine you're a historical reenactment society. Oh. You've got your members there. I suppose. I suppose. How I would you? Would. I'd have to fully demonstrate it by using my um, making an ad. Feel free to ask parker. Richard and David to help you out on this. Will you help me out with this? Um, well, I mean, I, 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 you see, this is one of the moments where. <laughs> So if, so if you imagine that this was the music practice room and, and there was some, someone in there having a lunchtime, a lunchtime uh, violin lesson, yeah. you, you would wait until they were in mid-tutorial. Right, then, I'm picturing it, yeah. And then together, yeah. after three... OK. Yeah. One, two, three... <laughs> That's it, really. <laughs> was the secret to getting the fact that they never knew who you were? You no, were they wouldn't know who you were because yeah. there's only your eyes showing. And he'd tell you to go away, so you would all duck down away, and then you'd leave it for a minute. And then come back. And then up you'd again. just come back up again. Yeah. yeah. What age were you? Maybe... They'd tell me you weren't one of the teachers. <laughs> no, maybe 13, 14. Right the way through to when you left. Right, right through till sixth form. Yeah. You, you never got told to stop this, or you got. A... Yeah. Well, they would they would bang on the window and be really furious for with us. For five years. They were banging down. on the window. <laughs> They did. say, lads, it's getting really boring. <laughs> but you and, see... And we know you are, Greg, because you're eight foot six. <laughs> but just out of interest, by show of hands, who would like to play Snorkel Parker Music Practice Room? I love it. Yeah. I'm quite keen on I've, the game. I've already played it. I didn't really enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds ridiculous. I mean, the last it time... It does I... sound utterly ridiculous, Greg. <laughs> it's almost as if you're lying. <laughs> Do you think he is lying, Lee? What are you going to say on this one? Well, I, I actually believe him. I could just see you doing that for, for kicks and giggles. Bob, which way are you leaning with this? Well, it's got the anticipation, it's got the jeopardy, <laughs> it's got the lot. Yeah. What a game! <laughs> Greg, Something tells me you're going to get a phone mom. call from Waddington's. <laughs> <laughs> if this gets picked up, this is... Just because I've talked about it now, it's mine, right? It's only yours yeah. if you really played it. If it's a lie, then you haven't copyrighted well, who's it. If it is a lie and I've just read it off this thing, whose idea is it? Well, well, I'm the person who wrote the lie. <laughs> I'd, like to, I'd like to maintain the rights to Balaclava Sports Hall. <laughs> <laughs> if, yeah. if anyone's interested. <laughs> right, Lee, it's time to take a guess. What are you going to say? We're going for truth. You're saying it's true. OK. Uh, Greg, were you telling the truth? Well, were you telling me? Well, oh, right, because that would make me utterly pathetic, wouldn't it? Yes, I was telling the truth. <laughs> yes, it's true. Uh, Greg did invent a game called Snorkel Parker Music Practice Room. At school, Greg was very popular with the other pupils. Not surprising, really, considering they'd created him in a science lesson. <laughs> <laughs> For my first term at university, I rented the bathroom in a student house and slept in the bathtub every night. <laughs> Lee? Greg? Yes? Before we even start this, can you stand up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, there'll be no, unless David stands up with me, there'll be no perspective. David? In fact, let's have proper perspective. Connie, yeah. can you stand up? <laughs> You know the question. <laughs> yeah. What's the answer? Uh, well, I just uh, hung off the end of the bath, as I hang off every single bed that I've ever slept in. It's, no, it's no, 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 no. You definitely don't hang off a bath no, like you no. hang off a bed. <laughs> because a bed, flat. go like that, and then you hang off. Yeah. You have to go up and cross and hang off. <laughs> the it's thing all, but 
you're not a snake, Greg. The thing <laughs> what actually uh, drove me to change my circumstances was that I was genuinely... I was bruising the side of my... Uh, cheek regularly by waking up in the morning and clanging into one of the taps. Yeah, well, Can I ask why on earth you would sleep with your head at the tap end? <laughs> <laughs> that is mad. Yes, well, you know, I was 18 years of age and I mainly lived off uh, Thunderbird wine, so bad so decisions putting... were my forte at that period. <laughs> so did, you have, did you have a bed? In no. the house? Did you do... oh, oh, so that was the reason you were in the bar? There was a... There was a um... well, why did you think he was in the bar? <laughs> I, cho I chose to, Phil, yeah. How many other people were there in the flat? Uh, three. Three people, what, three beds? Yeah. Why would you not sleep on the floor next to the bath? We had a giant uh, 1970s sofa that had a particularly... a peculiar cor corner unit, mm. and I mm. took um, both cushions from that corner unit and they fitted in the bath perfectly and it was incredibly comfortable. So, hang on, it wasn't a freestanding bath? A roll-top. Yeah, was it a roll top freestanding it, bath? It, 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 wasn't, it wasn't a freestanding bath, but the, but the end of the bath projected out into the room. Where was this, Greg? Which town were we, you? Was this Oxford or Cambridge? <laughs> <laughs> it was in Isleworth in West London. <laughs> <laughs> it was only because of a, a, a mix up in housing agreements. Uh, we soon sorted out after a term. I only had to do it for a term. What was the mix up? I'd agreed to move in with these three guys, and we got the wrong size house. <laughs> Hang on, that's not, that's not a mix-up, that's just stupidity. Yeah, there was it four of you, and you got a three-bedroom house with a bit of a mix-up. Okay. <laughs> the boys blamed me, which is why I got the bath. Why did they blame you? Because I was the one who booked the house. <laughs> How did you get into university? <laughs> So, Lee, what are you thinking? Marcus. I think it's too preposterous to be true. Mm. The taps. Phil? Taps for me, you don't... If you're going to sleep in a bath, you don't put your head no. up the taps. Silly. I think it might be true, but I'm not going to over... Oh, well, you're the skip. You've got the armbands, son. I might be the skip. Do you get armbands if you're a captain? <laughs> Only if you can't swim. Oh. <laughs> I'm telling you, I, I don't know if this is in the spirit of this game, this is true. <laughs> That was sufficiently moving. <laughs> I'm, I'm, going, going, I'm going with it. I'm saying it's true now. What okay. are you saying, Skippy? Should we say true? True. Not Probably Skippy, yeah. Rob, not Skippy. <laughs> <laughs> That's not good, right? I'm not going to go and go and fetch help. <laughs> I'm a Skip. Right? Someone's fallen into a mine shot. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, mate. True. We're, true. true. We're, true. we're going for truth. Just saying it's true. Greg Davis, were you telling us the truth or were you telling a lie? Do you feel, David, any sense of genuine competition in this game? Yes, I do, yeah. Then I think you're going to like me very much. It was a lie. Oh. Oh. Yes, it was a lie. Greg didn't sleep in his bathtub every night for his first term at university. I used to try and scare school friends by planting a particular drawing in their pockets signifying death. <laughs> Lee, what do you think? <laughs> what was the drawing? It was an owl. <laughs> uh, what, what? The owl of death. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. exactly. Its full title was actually the Hoot Owl Death Sign. Owl. Oh. What would you mean, the owl of death? What was it doing in this drawing? Hoot Owl Death Sign? That old chestnut. I could draw it for you if you like. <laughs> Greg? Yeah? I've got a pen, I've got some paper. I'll come over there. No, I'll, I'll, I'll come to you. Don't stand up next to me, it just highlights it. <laughs> <laughs> can you, uh, Greg, can you... <laughs> so, please, draw the owl of death. So... <laughs> Don't look at it, David, you'll die. <laughs> Just imagine you're innocently, you went in your pocket, <laughs> innocently minding your own business. You go, oh, what's this in my. <laughs> oh, no, it's the Owl of Death! Your friends would find that in their pocket and be. Not my friends, my deadly enemies. Right. <laughs> what, would, what would be the purpose of that? It was uh, for people who had crossed my friend and I. Well, what kind of things would they have to do to cross you? There was an English teacher who we uh, 
found a bit boring, so he uh, slipped one in his pocket. That was, the, uh, that was the highlight of the whole campaign, actually, was that the English teacher once stood up in front of the class and was chatting away and went into his pocket and went, ah. Oh. <laughs> and he went, sorry, everyone. Um, does anyone know anything about this? Because I've just... <laughs> Did you, was the purpose of it to, to scare them, like you would tell yeah. them that later on it was you? Or? No, no, of course not. We were both nerdy cowards. <laughs> Did you, you created a sort of mythology around what might happen if you found the hoot owl of death in, in your pocket. It, in our minds, anyone who found the hoot owl of death in their pocket would uh, very shortly afterwards meet their demise. <laughs> <laughs> To take a guess. What are you going to say? Is what do we true? think, Phil? Do you think, um, that, do you think that is possible? I, th I think it's possible, but I think it's a, it's a lie. I think it's a lie. Okay. My you say lie. You say lie. What about you, Lee? I say lie. Right, Greg. Yes. Truth or lie? Well, it would be pretty tragic if two uh, boys had spent their youth doing <laughs> that, wouldn't it? True. And it is indeed <laughs> true. <laughs> Yes, it's true. Greg did try and scare school friends by planting a particular drawing in their pockets, signifying death.